Hello, and welcome to episode nine of the Compassionate Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it means to be a vegan, number one, and what it means to be a vegan activist and ways that you can advocate for um, a vegan lifestyle. Absolutely. And I think one of the most important things we need to consider here is what what is veganism, first of all? Right. You know, um, I, think, I think a lot of times uh, podcasters, including ourselves, um, go into doing a vegan podcast without really explaining what veganism is. There's an assumption that those who would listen to a vegan podcast understand what veganism is. So what we're going to do first is start with um, a quick definition of veganism. Now, this definition is taken from the Vegan Society, and it is my favorite definition of veganism by far. Um, I don't think dictionary definitions tend to go far enough. So uh, the Vegan Society's definition of veganism is... Veganism is a philosophy and a way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment." In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. Yeah, I I agree with that definition. I think it um, encompasses every at least everything that we believe veganism is. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing about this definition is that it doesn't provide you with a checklist. Right. It's not about in order to be vegan, you must do X, Y, and Z. It is a philosophy, okay? So uh, a philosophy, a way of thinking, a way of living, great, fantastic. But while that may be similar for many, if not all, vegans, it's not going to be identical. Right. Not at all. No, it's, it's not going to resonate in every vegan's life in exactly the same way. So... It still gives the individual the freedom to tailor what their veganism is. Yeah. The only thing is that we are attempting to exclude as far as is possible and practicable. Notice this is not an assumption of perfection. Right. As far as is possible and practicable. Yeah. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. I mean, we do pretty well. Well, yes. I mean, the one area in which we are not purely vegan is with our companion animals. Right. Okay. We have four cats. They're amazing. We love them. We would not want to be without them. No. And of course, standard cat food is not vegan. Right. It just isn't. And so that's something that in recent months we've been considering changing. There are vegan cat foods available, um, but we do worry that changing their food suddenly or, you know, especially when they're used to a food right. you know, for a it long can, period of time. It can mess with it their system a little. It can mess with their little, system so. a little bit. So, so we're approaching that cautiously. And we actually do have some vegan cat food in our pantry. And we're thinking that, you know, after our next foray to Toronto, we'll start Um, introducing the vegan food to them slowly and see how it works. Right. But so while Christine and I do not consume animal products and we do not purchase animal products for use by us, (laughs) our cats right now still eat food that contains animal products. They do. Yeah, they do. And so we are trying to remedy that, but... It doesn't mean we're bad vegans. No. It means that up to this point, we have not found having vegan cats possible or practicable. Now we can move in that direction and that'll be great. And I really hope that we manage to do it because I think that would be fantastic. We can certainly try it. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. But again, going back to possible and practicable. So if it doesn't work for the cats, then... 
we can't do it. Right. Kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not about us. It's about them. It's about their welfare and, and their health. Yeah. And all of that. So. Yeah. So I wanted to share like a, just some simple ways that you can advocate for the vegan movement. Um, we don't we can't all rescue animals from research facilities or from farming facilities. But there are things that you can do. And as Sam said, I feel being vegan is is a first step. Being vegan is a form of activism. Oh, in, absolutely. In and of itself. Absolutely. So. And um, because I'm I'm a word person and um, I do really enjoy definitions of things, I'm going to give you a quick definition. This is the Merriam-Webster definition of activism. Um, it is a doctrine or practice that emphasizes direct, vigorous action, especially in support of or opposition to one side of a controversial issue. Now, I have to admit, I'm not wild about this definition, and that's for a, a few reasons. Um, direct, vigorous action, I think that's fine, but direct action is not necessarily always vigorous. So I feel like vigorous is qualifying action in a way that I, I think eliminates simple acts. Just passive act activism. Yes, exactly. Right. So it, it, it doesn't allow for simple means of activism, but it promotes perhaps the obvious, the protests, vigils, right? you know, those kinds of things. Um, again, as Christine said, rescuing animals from facilities. It's so awesome that there are people out there who are able to do that. But again, you not being able to do that, and we're not able to do that either, it doesn't make you less. So right. the word vigorous is what I have an issue with there. But the other thing is that it talks specifically about a controversial issue. Now, the thing is, I don't actually think of veganism as being controversial. Right. And why does activism have to have anything to do with something that's controversial? Then? Right. Exactly. So what I like to think of activism as being is very simply action. And so... If you are vegan or if you are vegan curious and you are taking steps to reduce the amount of animal products that you use or consume in your day-to-day -day life, just that is a form of activism because you are making an active choice to uphold or explore veganism. Right. Yes. Yeah. So... What we want to toss out there is that there are an infinite number of ways to be an activist, to be a vegan activist. And your activism does not necessarily need to head in one specific direction. It does not necessarily need to be specifically about animal welfare or animal liberation or animal rights. It does not specifically need to be environmental in nature. It does not specifically need to be health related in nature. It can be just about anything. And perhaps the most obvious example right here is one of our forms of activism is doing this podcast. Right. And we're not at this point anyway really exploring the heavy political side of veganism. Right. Because I'm not sure that that is what will draw people in. Well, right. Um, I'm not sure that... Well, I'm not sure that we're the ones to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, I, I follow a lot of really kind of heavy handed activists yeah. and I appreciate everything they do oh, and, absolutely. and share things that they post. And, but it, that's, it's just, that's just not who we are. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of have more of a kind hand. Right. I, exactly. I guess. So I guess not, not, to, not to say that those people aren't kind. <laughs> well, no, 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 not at all. I don't think that's where you're going. I think what you're trying to say is that um, we really want to make veganism as accessible as possible. Right. Right. You know, yeah. that there, there are um, misconceptions, I think, that veganism is, you know, either for 
the privileged or it's expensive or it's really difficult or it's incredibly restrictive or right that it's extreme you have to give everything up in order to be vegan and that's just not the case it's not and so we feel like if we can help people realize that veganism is actually um, incredibly delicious really easy to do for the most part Mm -hmm. affordable it's it's also just a choice that I've I've found just really makes me feel good. Yeah. I l- I like knowing that I'm doing very little harm in the world. Yeah. In the way that I eat. That, so do I. You know, it's yeah. it just feels really really good to it know does. that. It does it it makes you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. so I have a few simple ways that you can advocate for veganism. Yes. Um and first off you can make really good vegan food for the people that you love. Yes. That aren't vegan. Absolutely. Um, and show people that you're not eating anything strange. Mm-hmm. You're not, you know, it's right. not restrictive. It's mm-hmm. not extreme. Uh, like Sam said, it's not expensive. I mean, you can make it expensive it if you want. It can be if but you, you want can, it to be, but you, it doesn't have to be. No, absolutely not. And you can make really delicious vegan meals for the people that you love and maybe for the people that you don't love. Um, <laughs> why, why are we making food for people we don't love? <laughs> I don't know. You're trying to win them over. Um, but, you know, and... And they and that will show them that you know there is a there is a way to live more compassionately to, right. through your food. Right. So that that's one one way that you can act be be active in advocating. Um, Absolutely, and it doesn't mean that by making wonderful vegan meals for your family or your friends that they're immediately going to you know kind of hop the fence and and go vegan. No, and that's also not the point. No. Um, but what it might do is you know, kind of, of open, open the door a little bit to them being more open to the idea of, oh, well, maybe we could have a, a vegan or vegetarian meal every now and again. Maybe right. we don't need to have meat or eggs or dairy every day. Right. May, you know, it can at, at least, it can affect change in small ways. Right. Yeah. You're promoting harm reduction. Yes. Oh, that is a perfect way to say it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Christine. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yes, yeah. we are promoting harm reduction. Right. That is fantastic. Love it. Yeah. We have to keep that. Right. So um, next up on my list of things. So everybody get those recipes going for the people in your, oh, absolutely. In your life that are not vegan. Um, and then have a big dinner party and invite all of your carnivore friends over. Yes. And family. Yes. And um, yeah, show them show them how good vegan food can be. Absolutely. So, but next up on my list is um, that you can fundraise for a vegan organization. Yes. Um, for um, Animal Sanctuary. <laughs> Well, you can do, I mean, there are an incredible number of vegan organizations out there and there are, and they are organizations that kind of address every aspect of right. veganism. Some are environmentally focused, many are animal focused, right. some are health focused. And I would say find the ones that speak to you right? Um, and go right ahead and if you are able to uh, support them financially, or if they're close to you, volunteer. Right. Um, give them your time. You don't have to donate money. Okay. Money is money is great, and we'll talk about um, financial activism in in just a little bit. But um, you can also donate your time and your energy and your expertise. Yeah, and a, um, a lot of times that goes a little further. Yeah, it really does. You know, a lot of organizations they just need they need hands, they need bodies. Yes, absolutely, and so. Yeah. Like, for example, um, we do give to several farm sanctuaries um, across the country. Right. And um, we love going to visit sanctuaries whenever we can. Um, And again, you know, we, of course, wind up buying things in their gift shop, which then supports the sanctuary. Sure. Also, when we last went to Farm Sanctuary in Watkins Glen... We realized, wow, this would be really great if we could come volunteer here for a while. Right. You know, so possibly over a summer, you know, go hang out and, and volunteer there and help to care for the animals. Right. Um, so, oh, that would just be awesome. I would so love that. That would be great. It would be so great. You could stay in one of those tiny houses on yes. their property. Oh, my God. And... I want to do that. Yeah. yeah. We need to do that. So, 
So yeah, there are a million ways that you can do it. And like I said, there are tons of organizations out there. If you are choosing to donate to organizations, um, try to spread things out a little bit. So donate to local organizations and then donate to national organizations. And if you have a global organization that you can donate to. So you're kind of hitting um, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to make your make your dollars so vote with your dollars, definitely. You yeah. know, um, yeah, vote yeah. with your dollars. Yeah, and honestly, by going vegan, you kind of do that automatically because suddenly you're shopping in a different way. Right, you're buying different products. You are not buying certain products, and that's where your money talks. Right. Even more so than in your charitable giving yeah. is in what you purchase and perhaps more importantly, what you don't what purchase. What you don't purchase. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. And it's not that, you know, all of a sudden if, um, ev- well, if everybody suddenly stopped purchasing meat, dairy, and eggs, well, that'd be huge. But um, as an individual vegan, okay, if you suddenly, if you decide that you're going to go vegan and you stop purchasing um, meat, dairy, and eggs, and all other products derived from animals in any way, shape, or form, it's not like the companies that produce those products are suddenly going to go out of business. No, but it does no. hit them where it hurts. But it does hit them a little bit. My assumption is that as more people go vegan, companies aren't necessarily going to die. They're going to adapt. Oh, and they, They're and they are. They're going to change. Yeah. And they already are. Yeah, they definitely are. Yeah. So it's really, again, about affecting change and promoting harm reduction. Right. Yeah. It's not about, oh, we're vegan. We're trying to put all, all farmers out of business. No, not at all. No. We don't want to put people out of business, but we'd be very, very happy to help them adapt to a changing climate. Well, literally. Yeah, like you mean transitioning farmers. Transitioning farmers into from animals from animals to, into produce, to or, produce hemp or, or hemp or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Yes, that's it. Okay, ne- next on my list of ways that you can advocate is to be a vegan buddy to someone that you know that's vegan curious. Yeah. That really wants to make the change, that has seen how you've been living your life and and thinks they can do it, but they just need a little support. Yep. Um, so if you have a person like that in your life, be a vegan buddy for them. Um, invite them over to dinner. Go with them grocery shopping. That helps. Because mm-hmm. sometimes people are, I think, non-vegans or people that are curious and want to become vegan just don't really know where to start. Yeah. And, you know, they might be like looking online and seeing people posting all these incredible meals and, you know, it may, might not just realize that all they need to do is maybe um, make some pasta. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. That that's, make, that that's a start. Yeah. You Something make, you already do. Yeah. Make some pasta with veg. And, and if you want, you know, you can get vegan meatballs, you mm-hmm. know, and have spaghetti and meatballs. Get or, them at Aldi. They're really yeah. good. Oh, the all these meat, uh, vegan meatballs are delicious. I think we've talked about we have. that in the past. We have. Um, but so, yeah, be, be a vegan buddy. Yep. The buddy system. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you need a vegan buddy, we're here. Yeah. We are more than happy to be. If you'd like be, a vegan buddy, like be- <laughs> um, we email us. <laughs> at you know? compassionandcucumbers.com. Absolutely. I mean, we oh, no. might. We at might, gmail.com, sorry. Yeah. Um, we might not be able to, you know, in person. Right. We might not help physically. You be there but but we could certainly um we could certainly give you advice or whatever we'd be more than willing to help anybody that's interested in becoming vegan and has questions absolutely about it so next up on my list is um leafleting Mm. Uh, if you want to be active if you want to if you need to see yourself as an activist there are many organizations that will send you leaflets Mm -hmm. if you want to stand on the street and hand leaflets out to people about veganism you can do that um almost every vegan organization would probably agree to send you some some sort of information that you would be able to hand out to people so if that's your what you think that you know you feel like you want to really be active as an activist (laughs) I don't know. If that, it's kind of <laughs> redundant. Um, but you can leaflet. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just another way of getting information out there. 
Right. Yeah. So um, and starting conversations. Well, just thinking about leafleting, if you don't happen to live in a metropolitan area where it would be easy to stand on a street corner handing out leaflets and talking about veganism, you could do that, like, for example, at your local grocery store. Right. Yeah. Um, make sure that you have the permission. Yes. Of definitely the speak to management first. Yes. <laughs> make sure you have the permission of the business that you would like to stand outside of. Sure. And, um, You know, ask people if they would be interested in talking with you for a moment. You know, don't force your information on them. Do not antagonize. Do not try to make things contentious. Go out there and be a really happy vegan. (laughs) <laughs> who just wants to talk to people. Right. And yeah, just smile, wants a smile to share goes a long way. It really does. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in leaf- leafleting, contact the organizations that have the information you're looking for uh, or the information that you want to get out there. Right. And, and go do it. Yeah. But make sure you're going about it in the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Do your research. There are organizations that that give you tips on how to leaflet. So um, next on my list is to advocate online, share um, posts to share links, I'm sorry, to articles uh, about things that you agree with uh, involving veganism, Um, share uh, other activists information Mm -hmm. online. Uh, There's, you know, it. Some people say that, um, you know, sharing a post on the Internet doesn't really do anything, (laughs) but I think it can. It gets that information out there to people. If it's information based, it definitely gets that information out. Right. Absolutely. And I do I do believe that it is a form of veganism It is or veganism. Oh, my God. (laughs) It is a form of activism. Passive as it can get, mind you. No, I disagree because uh, meaning I disagree that it's necessarily passive. Because um, I, I'm just going to be very honest here. I am not a social media person. I really can't stand it. But Christine is outstanding with our social media. She does an incredible oh, job you. with it. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, you really do. And it's impressive to see how hard you work at it, getting not only our posts out there, but sharing the posts of other vegan content creators, of right. vegan activists, of vegan um, product creators, right. et cetera, et cetera. It, that is not passive. You are actively working on that I every suppose day. So, so I, I wouldn't want to call it passive activism. <laughs> yes, there's a passive component to it, meaning that once you put it out there, you have no idea where it goes right. and you will probably never see the end point of <laughs> I su- it. I suppose not. And, I mean, and that's okay. Yeah. But um, so like I said, if, if this is something that you're interested in, advocating via social media is not an option for me personally. Right. But it works for Christine. She enjoys it and she's good at it. So great. Awesome. Well, thank you. I will find other ways to do that. But I would, again, put out that um, just a little bit of a caveat Go into it with a really genuine purpose, yeah, right. to get information out there. Don't mark your articles with clickbaity titles. No. Don't try, again, to antagonize or polarize right. or divide people. That's not the point, yeah? It's just to share information, to get conversations started, and to get people to think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so don't, don't go for the clickbait. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go out there again, being reasonable and positive. You've done your research. You know what you're talking about. And you're not in it to force your views on anyone. You're just sharing your views. Yeah. And that kind of leads into my next tip, which is to engage in the important conversations with people if they're curious about your veganism. Yep. Um And even if they're kind of offhand about their curiosity about your veganism, even if it comes off as a little bit of sarcasm or whatever, like um, it is, I think it's important to engage in those important conversations with kindness and respect always. But, um, you know, have those hard conversations with people about why you're vegan. Absolutely. Yeah. And, And be honest about it. 
you know, it's again, it's just a matter of, of honesty and transparency. Right. You know, that, yes, I'm vegan because I don't want to kill animals in order to feed myself. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's that simple. Right. And and a lot of times it does come down to it being that simple. Yeah. The fact that it's also better for my health, the fact that it's also better for the environment, these are certainly big bonuses. Right. I don't want to harm other living beings to sustain myself. Right. And so that doesn't mean that I think less of someone who is not vegan. Right. Because guess what? I wasn't vegan for a long time. Right. And everyone comes to these kinds of decisions in their own time. And so it's not about, oh, I did this, you should do this too. Or I don't eat animals, therefore I am a better human being than you. Right. No, it's <laughs> not about that at all. It's just, this is the choice that I've made for me. I think, it, you know, and you can say, I think it would be a great choice for you. Also, always acknowledging that the person that you're talking to has free will. Right. And that their decisions are theirs. Right. End of story. And that whether you agree with those decisions, you will respect their right to, to make their own Absolutely, choices. Absolutely. That you will still treat them with kindness and respect, the kindness and respect that is due to every living being. Right. Which that kind of leads into the, the next thing on my list, which is to lead by example. Oh, to love not, that one. To not be a snarky vegan. <laughs> You know, <laughs> do not be a snarky vegan. Yes. Yeah. To, yeah, just respect people and, mm -hmm. and the fact that they do have a right to hold different opinions than you. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, not to be cliche or anything, but we have to reference the Mahatma, of course. Right. You know, it's about being the change. Yeah. Model the actions that you consider to be important. Right. Treat people the way you want them treating other people. Yeah, it really is that simple. It really can be. Um, so, yes, I actually love that you included that. Yes, lead by example. So be what you want to see. Right. Be the change you want to see in the world. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Mahatma. To the Mahatma. Always. Next on my list is to not expect people to accommodate your veganism. If you're going to dinner um, and you don't know if there's going to be vegan food, bring vegan food. Yes. Um, you don't. I don't think it. I don't think it's good to be the vegan that's like I can't eat anything here. Right. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> and if don't. You, yeah. I think it's just best it, to not expect people to accommodate you. Absolutely. But then here's another. This actually combines with tip number one. Right. So if you're going to a dinner party or you're going to have dinner with family and you know that somebody else is doing the cooking and you're not sure that there are going to be vegan options, bring a dish. Right. Yeah. Or offer to create a dish. Like, for example, you know, if we were going to see my, my family for a few days, we might not prepare a dish ahead of time, but we would say, you know, hey, mom, hey, dad, we'll do the cooking right. this night or whatever. Um, and so... Then not only do you know that you can continue to eat according to your ethics, but you can share that delicious vegan food with your non-vegan family and friends. Yeah, it does so go again, back to that first It does. It go, it's a lovely circle, that is. So, <laughs> a circle of life. Something along those lines, yes. And so, you know, just Christine's go-to is... Oh, there might not be vegan food. I'm making a lasagna. Right. Because everybody loves lasagna. Everybody loves lasagna. So, you know, we'll just make a, a beautiful vegan lasagna and off we will go. Yeah. And if you don't like lasagna, you've never had my lasagna. It's true. It's true. You can't not <laughs> like Christine's lasagna. It's phenomenal. I guess you can. No. I won't like it. No. Your lasagna is incredible. So, yeah. It's the lasagna to end all lasagnas. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. So don't expect people to always accommodate you. Right. Just be prepared um, to bring your own food if you're not sure that there's going to be anything that you can eat. Right. And don't right. see it as a slight. See it as an opportunity. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, don't be, again, don't be the snarky vegan. Don't right. be the, oh, well, they know I'm vegan and they didn't think about didn't, me. There's and, nothing here there's I, nothing can here eat. I can eat. No, there's, there's no point to that. Yeah. Absolutely not. Nobody so, likes a mean vegan. Well, nobody likes mean anybody. <laughs> Vegan or non-vegan. Right. Like, don't be mean. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, uh, so next on my list is to have an elevator pitch about your veganism. And if you don't know what that is, it's a imagine you're on an elevator and you're going, well, I don't know, three floors and there's somebody in the elevator and they want you to talk about your veganism. Mm. Have a short and concise explanation of the reason why you're vegan. Yeah. Um, I think we've said that a couple of times already mm -hmm. that, you know, we just we want to cause as little harm as possible. We do not wish to uh, invest in the. All right. So already the guy's getting off the, the elevator because <laughs> I am not. My elevator pitch is not concise. <laughs> I, so, your, but your see, I need to heed more, my own advice. Have an elevator pitch. My elevator pitch already has failed. Yes. Well, I mean, things you just haven't been in an elevator in a while. <laughs> I guess that's, that's it. it. If, if you I had more elevator it. experience, yeah. you'd, you'd have I guess, it down. I, my elevator pitch would probably be, I don't want to support the industrial farming complex and I don't want to harm or eat or use or... Exploit. exploit any other being on this planet. Boom. Okay. Now I can get off. This is my floor. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So have an elevator pitch. I'll work on mine. <laughs> you work on yours. <laughs> and, and send see, it to me. Send me, email me your elevator pitch because mine is kind of sucky. <laughs> well, and again, though, we're getting another circle because this goes right back to veganism does not imply perfection. No. Yeah. Right. So here we are giving some advice on how to advocate in simple ways. And, you know, some of them we don't even have figured out yet. Oh, no, we don't have all the answers. God, no. If you think we have all the answers, uh, you're listening to the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you think any podcast has all the answers, you're listening to the wrong, right. po I mean, the wrong podcast. We might have some answers to some questions that you Maybe. have, but we definitely don't have all of them. Heavens, no. Nor would I want to. Right. Because then we have nothing to learn and that's boring. Yeah. So next on my list is pick your battles. Mm. Or actually, I wrote after that, or don't battle at all. Right. Um, you know, sometimes it's just not worth arguing with people, mm -hmm. um, it, especially online. I think no. what Christine is going for <laughs> is you can choose not to engage. Yeah. So when, right. when, when someone brings up uh, an issue that, you know, it's, let's say someone is trying to pick a fight with you, you don't have to engage in it. Right. You can just say, okay, that's your opinion. I right. disagree. Yeah. And you can walk away from it. Right. You don't have to get yourself into an antagonistic situation. It's just not necessary. Right. Um, and because generally speaking, folks who want that sense of antagonism, it, I don't know. There's something in it. It's like they, they want to be right. Right. They really want to be right. And they want to be right for everyone. Well, none of us can be right for everyone. Yeah. So I think acknowledging that your own choices are hopefully right for you and that they may not be right for someone else. I think that just can diffuse a lot of those antagonistic situations. Yeah. Like, oh, you really think veganism is hugely extreme and you could never do it. And here are the reasons why. Well, okay. That's where you are. Yeah. That's fine. That's where you are. Godspeed. Enjoy your journey. <laughs> right. You know, maybe you'll change your mind someday. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, next on my list is to, uh, if you're, if you're looking for ways to be um, more active or to advocate there's lots of organizations that hold webinars mm -hmm. and seminars that you can go to to um really get in-depth training on how to act to be an activist yes in the vegan world yes so seek those out there's a lot of good information out there if simply put into your ecosia or google mm -hmm. um vegan webinars mm-hmm and see what comes up because there's a lot of them out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's one way that you can um, gain information. Mm -hmm. What else you got? Oh, to have have answers ready for um, common questions that people ask vegans. Okay. We know. Where do you get your protein? Plants. But I couldn't live without bacon. How do you live without bacon? There are some really great substitutes out there. 
How about other animals eat animals? Well, yes, but some of them, for some of them, it's a biological imperative and also their only option. For us, we are actually physiologically meant to be herbivores. Right. How about plants have feelings too? No never nervous system. S- no nervous system. I've never <laughs> seen a blade of grass shrink from the lawnmower. Yes, they don't have a nervous system. Right. So, so yeah, so have some answers at the ready when you get those, what I feel are inane questions. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't think they are inane. I mean, maybe they feel inane sometimes because they're commonly asked and there maybe. are definitely misperceptions uh, about... Um, you know, the idea of, of, you know, you can only get protein from animals. Right. That's, that's not even close to true. Yeah. And in fact, all of those animals from which omnivores are getting their protein, they get their protein from plants. So, right. so really by eliminating the consumption of animal products, you're just cutting out the middleman. You are. Yeah. That's all you're doing. You're yeah. going straight to the source and getting your protein from plants as right. well. Now, yes, there are better, there are certain choices plant choices that will have more protein than others. And right. yes, you will need to educate yourself on all of that. And sure. that's great and wonderful. Um, you know, just like, let's see, protein, B12. Right. Yeah, B12. Yeah, people get B12 from meat because we give the animals that they slaughter for meat B12. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they do get some B12 from eating off the dirt. Right. If they're grass fed. Absolutely. Um, but if they're grain fed, there's B12 in the grain. That's mm-hmm. why you're getting B12 from from beef or pork or whatever you're getting your B12 from. So Right. And so it's just as easy to, as we do, purchase a very simple vegan B12 supplement. Supplement. Because yeah. we know it's the one thing that we cannot readily get from the food that we're eating. Yeah. Or play in your garden a lot. Yeah, totally. Play in <laughs> because your that's a lot. where you're going to get it out in the dirt. Yeah, out in the dirt and and uh, don't wash everything so much. Right. <laughs> that's that's actually true. Yeah. Don't wash things so much. Don't wash things so much. I mean, in general, mm-hmm. we, we wash things too much. Absolutely. And now with um, COVID, everything's being sanitized. Mm-hmm. You know, to an inch of its life. Yeah. So. I'm sure there'll be consequences. Everybody's gut biome is a little bit off because everything's been sanitized so much. Yeah. But just, again, just be knowledgeable. Um, Know how to respond to those questions and do it in a very positive, cheerful, um, respectful way. Respectful way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Have answers. Have answers on the ready for those questions because you're probably going to get them from some people. That's right. And yes, it is possible to give up bacon and it is possible to give up cheese. Right. You know, lots of people have done it. And that doesn't mean, excuse me, sorry, frog in my throat. Um, It doesn't mean that you suddenly... Is that vegan frog in your throat? (laughs) Oh, totally not. (laughs) Totally not. So what could you say? Uh, I don't know. Instead of a frog in your throat. I don't know, but I have to think about that. catch in your throat or something. Yes, something's... Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to... No, because totally not. Good point. (laughs) Well spotted. That was good. I like it. Anyway. Anyway. But there are plenty of alternatives to those kinds of things out there. Yeah. Yeah. Being vegan doesn't mean that you suddenly stop enjoying the taste of these things. Yeah. It's, you're saying, okay, wait a minute. No, my ethics are more important than my taste buds. Right. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're saying anyways. Our ethics are more important than the, you know, 10 minutes of pleasure you get from eating an an animal-based hamburger. Right. Or, you know, something yeah. And like so that. if there are, we can, we can still get those flavors and textures just in ways that do not um, promote the abuse and slaughter of millions and billions of animals. Yeah. I read a fact online and okay, cause it was online. It must be true, but I of haven't, course. <laughs> I haven't researched this statistic, but, um, I saw online this statistic that was posted that if we killed humans in the capacity in, in the in the numbers that we kill animals, if we killed humans, we would be extinct in seventeen days. Wow! Yeah, 
Where did you get that statistic? I just, I saw it online. I don't know what the source <laughs> was. I don't know when the source was. I don't know if it's it's factual. Because I want to track that down. Yeah. I'd like to read more about that. Yeah. It's, but I thought it was a pretty effective statistic. Well, yeah. If it's true. Excuse me. If the, mm, the idea that we would completely vanquish the human the race, human race in, in 17 days. 17 days. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. That's really incredible. Yeah. So I don't know. Look into that, everybody. I'm going to be looking into that for sure. But wow, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I guess we'll just kind of wrap this up. The last couple of things I have on my list uh, are to always be kind, always in your activism, always be kind. Well, I'd like to extend that to just always be kind within your life. In life, yeah. Um, Honestly, for me, if I had to write a definition of veganism probably the first thing that would show up is the idea of compassion just the idea that all living beings are worthy of compassion everyone and by everyone i'm including animals um everyone is worthy of respect and consideration and kindness and that it's impossible to know what another person's situation is Right. Especially when you first meet them. It's just absolutely impossible. So refrain from snap judgments. Right. Refrain from being snarky. Go out into the world with the intent of being thoughtful and generous and kind. And just that will actually get you a long way. Yeah, it really will. It will go a long way. Yep. And the last thing on my list is if you're working heavily in advocacy uh, or in activism to remember self-care. Very important. Yes, because I, I, I know a lot of activists, they suffer from burnout. Yeah. Because that's all they're focusing on. It's all they're focusing on. So you have to remember to take care of yourself while you're taking care of all the animals in the world. Absolutely. Really, really important. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that we didn't mention, I'm I'm surprised that we didn't mention it. Um, if you want to support animals and care for animals, volunteer at a local shelter yeah we volunteer at our local humane society Mm -hmm. and um so most sundays we spend a couple of hours um hanging out with 50 or so cats yeah um loads and loads of kittens we get pounced on we get meowed at we get snuggles we it's just it's kind of amazing and what we do is we go in and we care for these animals who are waiting for their forever homes. Right. So we clean their kennels and their litter boxes. We make sure they have food and water and blankets and we socialize with them. Right. Um, and it is just a great thing. It is. We get, uh, I think we get a lot more out of it than the cats do, Probably. actually. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, even on the mornings, because we our, our volunteer shift is on Sunday mornings, and especially this time of year when it's so dark. Yeah. At the beginning You're getting of the up day, at six in the morning to go to go, <laughs> take care to go of the take shelter care of the animals. Kittens. Yeah. Um, it, it can be a little bit difficult, and you do have that, oh, I just don't know if I want to do this today. But then right. you get there, and you're being pounced on by half a dozen kittens at a time. And right. it's like, come on, how do you not? want to be part of this yeah and you know it's the perfect way to start a day yeah and you know you don't necessarily have to volunteer in the sense of taking care of the animals i mean a lot of volunteer organizations a lot of uh shelters they're looking for people to help with pr they're looking for people to help with scheduling to help with a lot of them have um merchandise shops attached to them right want, need help with that organizing fundraisers etc oh yeah so there's the Always, there's endless. a million things that you could can help with. That, so again, in, it, any... it comes down to like, so when we go help with the shelter animals, we get to use our experience in caring for cats because we both have cat, we have both had cats all our lives, pretty much. Yeah, and um, we get to use that experience to help uh, care for and socialize the shelter animals. But you can also use whatever expertise you have. You know, you can go and say, "Hey, I." You know, I, I am a, a marketing agent. Right. How can I help? How can I get the word out there? How can I help promote your next event, right. et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Um, you know, you can organize an event if you are a fabulous event planner. Yeah. You know, do a do a walkathon or a, a drive of some kind or a 
yeah. a rummage sale or anything that will bring in some funds to help the organization of your choice. Yeah. Yeah, those are all really great ideas. Thanks. So I guess we'll uh, wrap this up. Um, I hope you learned something. And if uh, if you're interested, I'm going to include um, a lot of links in the show notes of this episode. Loads to, of links. Yeah, to organizations that you can reach out to if you want to help or, or donate money or gain insight on how to... Um, Advocate. Be an advocate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll include all those links in the show notes. And uh, later this week, we'll be heading to Toronto, Canada. Yes. So uh, next week's episode will be brought to you from Toronto, yes, Canada. It will. We will be we'll recording be, in Toronto. Yeah. We'll be back on that food train for you. Yes, we will. So. Because we all know when it comes down to it, really, it's all about the food. <laughs> It's all about the food. Is it all about the food, though? Well, but the thing is, I think for a lot of people, that's the entry point. Yeah. Well, yeah. If the food is great, you're going to convince people. Yeah. Yeah. You have a point. Thank you. Um, (laughs) If you have uh, (laughs) any information or questions about today's episode, you can email us at compassionandcucumbers at gmail.com. You can visit our website at compassionandcucumbers.com. To look at our blog and read articles and there's links to the podcast there if you don't want to go to, uh, you know, a podcast app or whatever. And uh, what else? Oh, we're still doing the fundraiser for Mockingbird Farm Animal Sanctuary yes. on our Buy Us a Coffee site. And that's at buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. Um, anything else we need before we wrap this up? Hmm... No, I don't think so. I think that covers it. All right. Well, we will see you all next week from Toronto, Canada. Yes. All righty. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.